Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sunday morning service. Let's stand for opening prayer, please. Dear precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for today, Father. We thank you for waking us this morning and giving us another day of life, Lord God. We thank you for this beautiful day. And Lord, we thank you for the privilege of coming into your house this morning, Lord God, to worship you. We just invite your presence in this morning. We say, come Holy Spirit of the living God. Come among your people today, Lord God, and change lives for you, Lord God. Minister to those that know you, Lord God, and we'll give you all the praise and all the glory. And we ask it in your precious name, Lord. Amen. Amen. All right, we'll do roll call. <coughs> and Reverend David Light. Amen. And Sister Wanda Light. Amen. Amen. All right, let's grab a hymnal, and Sister <coughs> Wanda's going to come forward and lead us in song. I'm here too. <laughs> 346. 346. <laughs>
606. 606. Sister Light, too. Absolutely. Thank the Lord that they're here with us. What a joy. What a blessing. I want to continue to pray for uh, Brother Wu. He must not be feeling good this morning. And he's winding down. He's only got three more treatments, but the radiation's really burned him. So he's in a lot of pain right at this moment. Amen. So they say it's looking good. So we're looking for a continued good reports from the doctor. And I want to continue to pray for. Uh, Brother Jerome, that's all he has on his shoulders and yes. responsibilities. Amen. That the Lord continue to help him and bless him and all that he does here and outside of here. We continue to pray for our lay leaders and all they do. We continue to pray for our managers and our workers and everybody here that has a, a job or a chore. But this mission is a wonderful place. It's God's place, but it takes a lot of people doing a lot of different things for it to be the place that it is. So no matter what you're doing, whether you're on security, you're a cook, whether you're cleaning the grounds, the dorms, whether you're picking up trash, no matter what it is, it's valuable. And the Lord's placed you in that little position to do. So do your job as unto the Lord, that's what the Bible says. And the, uh, the stress and relief will go away. So. We're thankful for everybody that does all they do here. Amen. Doug? You want to share a couple of events that mm -hmm. just happened? Uh, yesterday we had a, a Tyros retreat at the Southern Correctional. We had 42 inmates. That's good. Uh, we, they finished the whole day, and we were all dressed. We were dressed, the team, the 12. And the warden came in, Mr. Connor, who's the new warden there. He's actually the advanced. 
she came to us and thanked us for doing that. We cooked her some food, and they fed the dog, and he said, I just got an award for this trip from helping the program for the DV. So he was very supportive, and he just praised the dog. Hallelujah. Yes. Uh, next weekend, uh, the high school graduation here in Lee County. Um, unfortunately, the Gideons had to give up the Hertz Arena because we didn't have enough volunteers to pass out the Bibles. So we only go to the Sun Coast Arena. That's all the Southwestern on Saturday. And so we can go to that event. We have uh, probably a couple thousand Bibles to pass out. Mm. Pray that that works out good. Amen. So put that on the show. All right. Yeah. Amen. Okay. Also, we, ha we have a wonderful Tuesday night prayer meeting that you all have prayer requests on Wednesdays and Sundays. You can come on Tuesdays when we meet on Tuesday night. Absolutely. It's not long. It's not over 20 minutes, a half an hour at the very most, and, and lift up your prayers and your needs. And it's a wonderful time we have every Tuesday night here. Did you have something back there? Yes, sir. I need to pray for Dr. Daniel Phillips. He promised to get his GED. He promised to the first year of Bible school. Amen. I passed him this year. Yes, sir. He prayed better than I ever thought. I always said to God. Amen. And this also marks the first day I have not had a cigarette all day. Amen. And with his help, I will achieve this thing. Amen. All glory to God. Amen. 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 Great. Absolutely. We prayed for him in Sunday school too. <laughs> Absolutely, Daniel. Yeah.
We want to pray for each one here to come to the saving knowledge of knowing Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. That's why we're here. Did I see a hand there? Yeah. Okay. Amen. Amen. And then, you know? Um, I wanted to share real quick. I went to my brother's house yesterday, and my brother's a minister, uh, as I already shared. But uh, the family wanted something that I make, that they don't know how to make, so they went shopping and they got some back for me. It was just biblical, spiritual, speaking of the family. I mean, and my little brother, when I was leaving and I was getting in the car, told you, and it's because of this place, he said, you have a lot of spiritual growth. That place where you're at, you are paying attention. Amen. And I, had, I told him, to God goes all the glory. I asked you to keep me, and this place has not let me down. Amen. And I want to thank God first, and I want to thank the mission second for that. Thank Amen. God. Amen. 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 All right. I know I'd like prayer. How about you all? I do. Amen. Let's stand for prayer, please. Brother Jerome, lead us in prayer, please. Jesus. Yes, Lord. Refresh him, Lord. Encourage his heart, Lord. Yes, Jesus. That his labor here at Fort Myers Two Mission will not be in vain, Lord. Yes, Lord. We thank you for him, Lord. We thank you for his loyalty to you, Father. Yes, Jesus. Bless him, Lord. Bless his family, Lord. And Father, we ask answer prayer, Lord, for the unspoken request, Lord. You know all about them, Lord. You know the need, Lord, of our unsaved Lord. loved ones.
Amen. Amen. All right, the ushers are coming forward and we'll take the morning offering, which goes to the expenses of the mission. Thank you this morning again, my Lord, for your amazing and relentless love in our lives. Father, let our hearts this morning come to you, Father God, as humble as we are. Give you all the praise, all the exhortation that belongs to you, that you do, my Lord. Let this morning be a beautiful morning, Father, as we touch our hearts, Father. Let the praise and worship, Father God, ring in the throne of God this morning. Amen, amen, amen. Amen. Thank you all for your giving, and thank you, Sister Light, for the beautiful offertory. Uh, Sister Rhonda is going to come forward and lead us in another hymn. Page 625. 625. <laughs>
this down. Oh, okay. Wow. All right. We're getting more than we anticipated today. Praise the Lord. That's the Lord, though. He always gives you more than you think you're going to get. <laughs> Amen. So uh, let's open up our hearts and see what the Lord uh, has for each one of us through brother and sister light. Amen. 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 Praise God, I'm glad I found the narrow road. Amen. Hey, man, I'll get this machine on here. Am I on? Good, good, good. All right. We don't want you to miss a word. We want you to hear everything. I like to speak loud enough that if you're deaf, you can hear me. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to tell you one thing, fellas. Well, ladies too. I'm having the time of my life here. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying being with you. Woo, hallelujah. I say glory. Amen. Praise God, huh? Amen. You might not feel like it, but I'd like to get you shouting before I leave. Amen. Oh, praise God. Well, I feel like the Lord has turning my attention to the book of Judges this morning. That's one of those first five books in the Bible. The book of Judges, chapter 16. I'm only going to read two verses because I'm going to be kind of dealing with the scripture as we go along. So I'm going to read verse 7 and 17. Judges, chapter 16, verse 7 and 17. I, I don't know if you're familiar with this story or not, but it's a tremendous story. Judges chapter 16, verse 7. And Samson said unto her, If they bind me with seven green wisps that were never dried, then shall I be weak and be as another man. Verse 17. Then he told her all his heart and said unto her, There hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God, from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I will become weak and be like any other man. Jesus, would you help us this morning in the preaching of your word? Oh, may that anointing touch our lips of clay. Glorify your name. Move across this congregation from the front to the back and side to side, speaking to needy hearts, encouraging souls, and glorifying your name in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Now you're going to enjoy my title. I know you will. For it's in a question form. Are you a weakling? Are you a weakling? Let's look at this fellow for just a little bit. I'm going back probably on the, the next chapter, the uh, chapter prior. Samson's uh, quite a character. Huh. Maybe you're quite a character too, huh? But we find him uh, that he's be, uh, becoming a judge in Israel and that... Uh, uh, Samson has gone down the road and this lion comes out and Samson just takes a hold of him and rips him apart. Throws the carcass aside. He didn't know if he's going to need that carcass a little bit later. But he, he goes down and he's, he's looking at the, some things there in this country where he's going and, and uh, all of a sudden, here's these guys, and he puts forth a riddle to them. He said, now, if you can tell me the riddle, I'll give you seven, each of you seven garments, changing of clothing. If you tell me, you've got to give them to me. And so what did they do? Well, I'm going to use Samson's word, you plowed with my heifer. In other words, they put pressure on his wife, and she got the riddle finally out of him. So what's he do? He goes out, he slays all those Philistines, gets their garments for them, takes them back to the men. Now, as we go on through the story, uh, and that, by the way, that was, I find it a little bit interesting because he takes the jawbone of an ass and slays the 50 men. Can you do it? I used to carry a jawbone with me. Yeah, you know, it had all the teeth in it, but it went about that long. He slays 50 men with it. Wow. He's quite a character. 
Then read on a bit, on a bit farther, and I'm going to just kind of pass through here so I can get right to the message. But uh, what about the time that uh, they closed the gates? They thought he had, they had him all locked in. He just walks out, picks them gates up, puts them on his shoulder, and takes them up on the hill. Now, I don't know. I'm looking up on the hill, and I see them gates swinging back and forth in the breeze. They thought they had Samson. But let me tell you something, friend. When you think that you're in control is when you've lost it. Samson begins to get to the point to where he's forgetting that God is the one that's giving him this strength. And I can do it in my own strength. So what's he do? We're moving right on down here to our scripture lesson here. He meets that there uh, a woman. Now notice in verse 1 of chapter 16 it says, Then went Samson to Gaza and saw. And saw. So he begins to look. Be careful what you're looking at. The things that you're looking at can begin to control you. Amen? Amen. So, now, I, I, I told you I like Bible study. Let's look at the word Samson here for just a little bit. His name means sunlight. So when the sunlight's shining, it's bright, right? Yes, are we spiritually bright this morning? Yes, sir. Or are we a little dull? <laughs> huh? Sunlight. Now, the sunlight may be shining now, but it might be stormy later. So just because his name means sunlight now doesn't mean he's always going to be shining. Notice there's something else about, uh, look at the word Gaza there, the city. And it means strong, a goat. Here's a strong place, but here again, it can be a place that's leading the strong away from spiritual things. Now, so Samson goes down to Gaza, and he saw a harlot. Now, I know there's some things, I don't know about you, but there's things in the scripture sometimes, I, now what about this? What's this mean? For instance, one place in the scriptures it says, the, the parents of Samson, the first gal there, the, the, uh, what, the, isn't there one in our own country? But it was the Lord's doings. The Lord's leading. God was in all of this. But God can be in some things, but if we don't do exactly what God wants us to do, we'll suffer the consequence just like Samson did a little later. Amen? Amen? So he sees this gal by the name of Delilah. Now she's interesting because her name means languishing. All right, Mr. Webster. What does the word, these guys all know what languishing mean, meant, but I didn't, so I looked it up. You're smarter than I am. So what's the word languishing mean? Listen to what Mr. Webster says. To becoming feeble. Hmm. Now, let's begin to look at the stages, and I'm not going down step by step by step, but friend, we're beginning to see the downfall of Samson. This feeble gal is going to destroy him. You may seem like you can conquer and be on top of it, and you're winning now, but keep your guard up. So, Languishing, becoming feeble, losing strength. Now, notice the next thing about this gal is pining. And we're going to find Delilah a little bit later saying, Samson, honey, you don't love me because you're not telling me the truth. Hmm? Come on, I want you to know this is a reality, friend, whether you realize it or not. There's those things out there that will try to weaken you and destroy you spiritually. Oh, that God would help us. Now, let's move on down 
in verse 5, uh, there's the word, and she said unto him, enticing him. Enticing. Let's look at the word entice means. It means to open, make roomy, usually in a figuratively sense, in a mental or a moral sense. Oh, just opening up. Opening up to whatever will destroy you. Mm. In a sinister way, it means to uh, delude, deceive, flatter, persuade. Silly one. Silly one. Wouldn't you say Samson was kind of silly to go down this road? Hmm? I want you to know, you better watch out because Delilah's around the corner to get you. Amen? Amen. You got to keep your guard up. I, I got to keep moving, but don't mind. Now, we find in the uh, verse 10 the word mock. And the word mock means to deride by implication, to cheat, deal deceitfully, deceive, mock. Again, you're getting another character of Delilah. She mocked Samson. There's those out there that will mock you when you say that you're going with God and you're serving the Lord and you surrendered everything and you're quitting sin. Ha, ha, ha. You, you'll never make it, you weakling. Verses 11 and 17, and we find different places in the scripture the word weak, but in verses 11 and 17, the word weak means to be rubbed or worn. Have you ever been in a place where somebody just kept what it, what's that word they want to use, you know? They just needled you. They just, come on, come on. You can't. You Come on, you're weak. You'll never make it. Come on, come on. Join the crowd again. Hmm? Rubbing to make it weak. Also, the stroke in a flattering. You're getting another picture of her character. Stroke in a flattering manner. Oh, Samson, honey. Oh, Samson. You have such nice hair. Mm -hmm. Oh, my, 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 my. There's, there's so, much, so much goody in here, and I don't, want to, I don't want that bell to ring over there before I get done. The word weak, according to Noah Webster, is the primary sense of the root is to yield. To fail, give way, recede, or to be soft. Samson, I thought you was a muscular man. You carried the gates out. But to become weak can make you soft. Can I say something, fellas? People, every one of you. If you don't use your spiritual strength, you'll lose it. And it's just like our muscles. If we don't use them, they become weak. And I can uh, speak from experience. I can't lift what I used to. In fact, there's some things now, days, I have to say to my wife, honey, come and help me. And it may not be much, but both of us are straining. Why? Because we've lost muscle tone. The lacking of using it. And the lacking of using your spiritual strength, you'll become spiritually weak. Mm. I'm going to skip over because there's so much here. Let's go down to our, our scripture lesson. In verse 7 of chapter 16, Samson said unto her, 
Now notice, this is Samson's first testimony. If they bind me with seven green whisks that were never dry, then shall I be weak and be as another man. The first thing that I see with Samson here is he's beginning to flirt with what he shouldn't be flirting with. Seven green whisks. And I'll be just like any other man. When you start down the road of flirting with the world and <coughs> sin, you never know where you'll end up. I'm like, I could, and so what's she do? They bring in the seven green whisks. They wrap him, bind him all up in, and she says, Samson, Samson, the Philistines be upon you. And he flexed his muscles and popped them green whisks like they were nothing. And he went out and destroyed some Philistines. Go to the second testimony in verse 11. And he said unto her, if they bind me fast with new ropes. Ropes are made out of hair, right? Except you get these hair modern day ones, you know, that use the synthetic. But the old ropes, they use camel hair, horse hair. You see what he's getting close to? Wherein it was his strength. Remember, his strength was in his hair because it had never been shaved. Mm -hmm. He's beginning to flirt now with the area and the things that he shouldn't flirt with. And so if they bind me fast with new ropes that had never been occupied, then shall I be weak as be as another man. First of all, Samson, you're not supposed to be like another man. You have a call that you are to perform. And fellas, people, whenever we begin to uh, justify ourselves like, well, look, they did, that's when we're getting in trouble. Amen. We got to get above that thought and be what God wants us to be if nobody else does it or not. Whether you believe it or not, there was a time in my spiritual life, early in my spiritual life, that I made up my mind, if my wife with this way or not, I'm going this way. I'm glad she's going with me, friend. But I made up my mind, if she didn't, I was going this way. I found something that I never had before. The world never gave it to me. The church world never gave it to me. I found it through Jesus. Woo, 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 hallelujah. Hmm. Praise God forever. Amen. Amen. Let's go to the third testimony. Verse 13. And Delilah said, Samson, hitherto thou hast mocked me and told me lies. Tell me wherewith thou mightest be bound. Notice now what he's playing with. He's literally playing with his hair now. And he said unto her, uh, If thou weavest but a seven locks in my head with a web. Watch. I'm going to be like any other man. What's she do? Now, I, I don't know how big that weaver's beam is. Some of them I've seen have been pretty good size. But she took that weaver's beam, took his seven locks of his head, and weaved them together. Samson, Samson, the Philistines. And what's he do? He gets up with that beam in his hair and walks out. But now he has played so close now. Notice in this place, he didn't say that he would be weak. Maybe it's because he already realizes he's gone too far. 
gone too far. There's a point to where if you're not careful, you'll go so far that it seems like there's no return. Now that's one of the tricks of the devil is to make you feel like you've gone too far and there's no return. But let me tell you, friend, let me tell you, if God, if you feel any tug in your heart, there's still hope. And keep coming to Jesus as long as there's hope. Amen. <laughs> oh. Let's go to the fourth testimony. In verse 17. And he told her all his heart. She knew that he had told her everything. I don't know how she knew it, but the Bible says she knew that he told her all his heart. Now, can you not see, Samson? He become weak. She's got him. Can you not see him? She's sitting there on the couch. And she's got him stretched out there. And his head with his seven locks of hair is lying in her lap. She's kind of rocking him gently. And she's got the big black beady eyes of blinking at Samson. And she says, oh, that's Samson, honey. And she's so flattering, you know. And just... Go to sleep, honey. Just go to sleep. And it's not long until he has gone into a deep sleep. I'll tell you something, friend. When you get into a deep sleep, you never know what will happen. There's different things that can bring that deep sleep because there's been people that's gotten on drugs, drunk, become drunk with alcohol and liquor, and didn't know what they were doing. Now she's hearing him snore. And I mean, she's really got him snoring. In fact, I, in my imagination, I think he's snoring so loud that he doesn't even hear her say, come on, bring the shaving cream. Bring the razors. And while he is fast asleep, she shaves off those seven locks of hair. Samson, Samson, the Philistines be upon thee. I'll do like I have before. But he wist not that the Spirit of the Lord had departed. He knew not that God was gone out of his life. Now the consequence comes. Samson loses his eyesight. Can you imagine, can you imagine in your mind them putting Samson down, his strength is gone? And the original thought here is they bored out his eyes. Now, do you know what that means? Some of you, anybody around here familiar with the old, what they call brace and dick? Huh? It had a knob on top, the handle went around like this, there was a the, uh, device that held the bit. This is the idea. And they take him and they begin to run that old brace and bit and <laughs> plucked out his eye. Samson lost his eyesight because of flirting with the world. He was a weakling, friend. I know we don't want to think about him being weak. But let me ask you a question. Or maybe I should make a statement. You know, we, 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 we show our weakness by what we surrender to. You think that you, you're strong and you can conquer let me ask you a question. Has the cigarettes got you conquered? If they do, friend, you're a weakling because you're not mastering them. They're mastering you. 
Or what about alcohol, beer, liquor? Or what about that little can that some people carry in their snuff or in their pocket or their purse called snuff? Do you know two dips of snuff is equal to five packs of cigarettes in nicotine content? I'm not being unkind, friend. I'm stating facts. When we surrender and cave into these things, we're weak. We're not being strong. The strong person is the one that can resist them. Amen? Amen. Can resist the alcohol. Can walk by the tavern and not go in. That takes a man or a woman. What about getting into the habit of lying, not telling the truth? That's a sign of weakness. Let me tell you something, friend. You can say what you want to, but our government is full of weaklings. They don't know how to tell the truth. It has become such a habit of lying until they think that they're telling the truth. I remember a lawyer telling me one time, said, Reverend, a person can tell a lie sufficient number of times until a lie detector cannot detect it because it thinks it's telling the truth. What about cheating? Oh, preacher, I'm not cheating. Well, let's go right down to one of the little nitty-gritty things around here. Uh, do you cheat by making them think that you're paying your tithe when you're just putting the nickel and dimes in? That's cheating. You're cheating yourself because God said bring. Tithe, what's tithe? Ten percent. Where's the offering then? What about our attitude? Are we a weakling about our attitude, you know? Hmm? And you know, the devil would like to get your attitude to where you, mm, and you despise, you don't, mm, don't like them. Mm, mm. And our attitude can destroy us. But let's go another area. Are you a weakling when it comes to women? Are you a weakling when it comes to pornography? <coughs> now it's getting quiet. I think I better get my little sign out. Let me tell you something, friend. We're living in a day, I'm not just you, friend, but we're living in a day when there's weaklings in this, this world of ours. We need some spiritual giants. We need people that will sell out and go through with God whatever the cost. Amen. Amen. Becoming a Samson spiritually. Amen. Amen. God will help us but we have to want him to. So you say, when you start to think about Samson, read through the story again. It got to the point to where he wasn't looking to God, but he was looking to Samson. My strength, my ability. I don't know whether we have any men around here now or not. There used to be some that would, would go out there out back when they had the, the dumbbells and the gym stuff out there, and they'd work out, you know, and they'd pump and build muscles and stuff like that. I've seen some fellas like that that still was so weak. And spiritually weak, some of them are really weak. Amen? I don't care how big your muscles are. If you're flabby spiritually, you're in trouble. Amen. You're, uh, you're not 
under, you don't have things under control. These habits are controlling you. That's cigarette, women, pornography. These things are controlling you. I'm closing, but I'm asking you a question this morning. Who's in control of your life? If your life is not serving God, do you know who's in control? No, it's not you, it's the devil. Either you're serving God or the devil, one or the other. Amen. And if God's serving you, he's in control. You go to him for leadership. If the devil's in control, he just has you, period. Are you a weakling? Are you a weakling this morning, friend? I want us to stand. I want us to bow our heads. I just wonder if anybody would like to pray. I know you want to go eat, but is there anybody here that's interested enough in your spiritual life that you'd like to pray before we go? If so, this all is open. Amen. God bless these hearts that are coming. Amen. This means, this means business with God, huh? Amen. Any others? Do you know another thing, friend? You're going to show your strength by getting out of your seat and moving to God. It takes a man or a woman to do that. Any weakling can turn and walk out the door. Anybody else want to come to join me who are here? Amen. I'm not going to tell you long. All right. Those of you that can help us to pray with these that are here, let's gather in and pray with these first before we dismiss the others to go. Amen. Let's get, start praying with them. Go ahead. And I'll pray and let the others go. Master, we're grateful for your help this morning. Thank you for these precious hearts that are at this altar. And help them, Lord, just to be determined to go through with God and build some spiritual strength on Jesus Christ. Go with the others. Continue to speak to hearts. Bless in the dining hall. That wonderful meal. In Jesus' name. Amen.